When the ship sank, one of the crewmen was trapped under a cannon on the lower gun deck, right where the water was pouring into the ship. And when the ship was excavated 333 years later, his body was found lying there, complete skeleton, still wearing the clothes that he died in. Uh, and because his skull had protected the brain, uh, but had broken, it was possible to recover the brain more or less intact. Your brain is mostly made out of fat and water, uh, and what happens underwater is that it gradually turns into soap. Uh, and then once it's recovered from the water, it dries out and shrinks. And so that's why it's the size it is now. And it's very dry and brittle and porous. Probably was uh, preserved also because there was a lot of iron in the vicinity where this particular sailor died. It was right next to a, a cannon. Uh, and so there were a lot of iron bolts and fittings in the area. And they've permeated all of the material that was found there. We didn't just find his brain, by the way. We also found his hair, he was blonde, uh, and his fingernails. So uh, he was actually in quite good condition. The brain's complete, all the component parts are there, uh, but we really can't learn anything from it. There's no cell structure left, there's no DNA left. It's soap in the shape of a brain. And what we can mostly learn from the, about this sailor, we learn from his clothes and his, and his skeleton. That we can tell he was probably in his 30s, he was about a, 163 centimeters tall, which was a little bit under average for the period. Uh, and uh, he was reasonably attired like any common sailor would be with a jacket, a wool jacket and trousers and stockings, and was wearing shoes. Um, he was carrying a lot of pocket change. He had 36 copper coins in a, in a cloth purse uh, with a total weight of about 700 grams, which is a lot of weight to be carrying around all day. Uh, and he had his knife uh, in a leather sheath in the pocket of his trousers.